Well, welcome to the Faculty of Theology's Open Day. My name is Professor Dion Foster. I am a professor of systematic theology and ethics in the Department of Systematic Theology. And it's my joy to be able to tell you a few things about the Bachelor of Divinity degree that we offer within the faculty. So let's begin with just a little bit of information about the faculty itself. So the Faculty of Theology is a very diverse community of students and staff. And uh, I must say, it's a wonderful place uh, for you to come and study, to learn, to grow, and to prepare yourself for uh, ministry, for service, uh, for, for ethics and responsible living. Now, one of the basic questions people often ask us is, what is theology? And in general, the, the subject of theology is a, a study of uh, the beliefs, the ideas, the notions, the concepts of what we call uh, Christianity or the Christian faith. And um, we tend to focus on a number of sources. The first of those, of course, is an understanding of the Bible. So those 66 books of the Bible, the Hebrew scriptures or Old Testament, uh, the Greek scriptures or the New Testament, and we, we learn a little bit about the time in which they were written, the history and culture of those who wrote them and read them, and then, of course, focus on the message that's contained within those books, and, of course, their historical reception, how people have, have used the Bible over the centuries, even uh, to, to contemporary times. The second uh, area that we focus on is uh, we look very much at the history of Christianity and the church. So from its founding, uh, just after uh, the time of, of the writing of the New Testament all the way to today. For example, why are there Catholics and Protestants? Um, why are there churches like the Dutch Reformed Church and the Methodist Church? What makes them different from one another? What makes each of those unique? Uh, what do they teach and believe? What are their practices? So the history of Christianity or ecclesiology uh, is the study in which we do that. The third area that we focus on is the notion of practical service in relation to the church or forms of ministry. Now, of course, not everyone who studies theology is going to become a pastor or a minister or a priest. Many people become counselors or journalists or teachers, but we, we teach you the kind of skills that you need, things like leadership, um, understandings of spirituality, uh, understandings of what it means to be in community, conflict resolution, for those who are going to become ministers or pre uh, priests, how to preach, how to conduct services like funerals and many other things. So that's more or less what we cover in the study of theology, and we go all the way from uh, bachelor's degrees uh, through the postgraduate diploma to master's degrees and uh, to, to the PhD. Now, you'll see from the yearbook that there are a number of undergraduate degrees that you can register for. I'm not going to speak about the Bachelor of Theology uh, or the Bachelor of Theology Youth Work. That's a three-year degree. Uh, my colleague will speak about that. But what I want to focus on is um, to tell you a little bit about what the entrance requirements are to get into the Bachelor of Divinity or the Bachelor of Theology. They're actually the same. So firstly, you need a national senior certificate uh, certified by Umalusi, and you need an average of 60%. And life orientation is excluded from that. And then you need a mark of at least 50% in each of four school subjects uh, on the list of designated subjects. And the good news is, in fact, all accredited subjects by Umalusi uh, are recognized now. And then to enter the Faculty of Theology, you don't need to write the NBT test, the National Benchmarking Test. However, if you do want to take it and write it, uh, you can do so. Um, the details are uh, in, in this uh, presentation. And um, if it should come to the point where we have to select persons, if we have more applications than, than those that we can take, then of course the NBT test help, helps us to see who has the, the interest and the aptitude for the kind of studying that we do in theology. So this is just a brief list of some of the subjects that uh, are considered, that uh, if you come with, with these kinds of subjects, uh, you'll be considered. So unlike some other faculties, we don't require you to have um, specific subjects. Uh, any of the subjects, 60% average, with 50% for four of them, uh, excluding life orientation, and uh, you will qualify uh, to be considered for entrance. Now, which are the kinds of subjects which would tend to help you? So if you're in, in uh, grade 11 and you're busy preparing and thinking about studying theology, 
Um, some good advice is that you pay attention to, to languages, uh, to literary subjects, because of course, uh, like philosophy or history, um, theology focuses a great deal on, on literature. So the Bible, on historical documents, on beliefs and doctrines, and all of these are contained in books. So the one thing that we know about theologians is that they learn to read and they learn to enjoy reading. And of course, we also write a lot. So um, we tend to write a lot of essays. Um, we, we, we write sermons, uh, we write talks, newspaper articles, all of those kinds of things. So any subject that can help you uh, to, to develop literary skills, that can help you to develop uh, as, as a reader, a thinker, uh, a writer, a speaker, those are going to be the kinds of subjects that, uh, that would do well to prepare you to study theology. So what are the possibilities? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there is the Bachelor of Theology degree or the Bachelor of Theology Youth Work degree. These don't contain or require the, the source languages of the Bible, uh, Hebrew for, for the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament and Greek for the New Testament. But um, what we want to talk about today is the Bachelor of Divinity degree. Now, this is a four-year professional degree. So when you exit it, you, you have the equivalent of an honors degree. And generally, the Bachelor of Divinity degree is a degree which is required by certain denominations for persons to become ministers. So, for example, the Dutch Reformed Church, uh, Urksa, the Uniting Reformed Church, the Lutherans, some Anglican, Methodist, and other churches encourage their students to do the Bachelor of Divinity degree. So this degree covers all of the subjects that we spoke about earlier, Old Testament, New Testament, systematic theology, which is about the beliefs, you know, why do we believe in God? What is the nature and person of God? Uh, things like the church, what is evil? Uh, what is sin? How do we deal with these kinds of issues? Ethics, if we believe that creation is made good, how should we live in a way to bless and honor creation. If humanity is created in the image of God, how do we safeguard one another's dignity? So ethics. And then, of course, uh, the, the subjects we spoke about earlier as well. Uh, practical theology, such, such as counseling, leadership, uh, spirituality, um, you know, conflict resolution. And then, of course, missiology, um, how we establish churches that fulfill God's will in the world and uh, can best serve people. Now, what sets the, the BDiv degree apart, Bachelor of Divinity degree apart from the uh, Bachelor of Theology degree is that you have to do uh, source languages. You have to do Greek and Hebrew. And let me tell you, as someone who's done those languages, it may sound a little bit scary, but it is the most wonderful thing to be able to read the Bible in those uh, source texts, to be able to, to read the original text as it was written by the authors, to understand those particular words in their context, their, their lexical meaning, their grammatical, syntactical meaning, and that really is a wonderful thing. And of course, you do that in the Department of Ancient Studies, so you spend some time uh, moving off our beautiful theology campus onto the beautiful main campus. The other difference is in your fourth year, um, you specialize in, in a subject. So, for example, one of the, the three disciplines, systematic theology and ecclesiology or practical theology and missiology or Old Testament or New Testament. So, so one of those three major disciplines or one of the, the six sub-disciplines becomes a speciality and you write an extended, your first extended research assignment. And that prepares you uh, to be able to go on into ministry. And of course, in some churches, there is the requirement that um, you do a Master of Divinity degree, which you can see there. That's a one-year professional degree. It's a little bit like an MBA for persons who are going into ministry. And uh, the BDiv degree gives you entry into that degree. Um, it, it gives you that honors qualification. And, um, and there you get to, to really hone your skills. And just to mention, for students who are wanting to enter the ministry of the Dutch Reformed Church, um, you also need to do, once you finish the MDiv degree, uh, you go into a church and in that practical year, you do a postgraduate diploma in theology and ministry. And you'll visit the campus a few times during that year, but your major work will be done in your church. So I can just say this is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful qualification for, for anyone who is wanting to prepare and develop themselves for, for work of service, for the kind of work that is in the interests of the common good in society, for persons who are wanting to de develop critical analytical skills, who are wanting to work in things like ethics or counseling, 
for persons who are wanting to to write, uh, such as journalists or authors, it really is uh, a wonderful degree for you to study. So what does it cost um, to do the BTH degree, the Bachelor of Theology degree, costs 45,106 Rand per annum, and the Bachelor of Divinity degree costs 52,062 Rand per annum. And many of the churches that require their students to come to the faculty do offer some financial aid and support. And we would encourage you, if you're thinking of, of studying theology, uh, speak to your bishop, your moderator, or your supervisor of studies, or your local minister, and just find out if there is any financial support uh, to aid you. And then, of course, you can also uh, contact the University of Stellenbosch. There are sometimes uh, bursaries and loans which are available, and you can do that via the details on the screen. Uh, send an email to info at sun.ac.za or phone the number listed there, and uh, they'll be able to point you in the correct direction. Now, the final thing to say is um, if you're interested to apply, um, if you're in grade 12 this year and you're wanting to join us uh, in, in the following year, then please remember that applications open on the 1st of April and they close on the 31st of July, 2021. So to enter the 2022 cohort, you need to apply this year, even before you've finished your matric. And um, if, if you can do that via the, the university's website, apply online. And then as soon as your results are received, uh, you will be notified whether you have a space in the Faculty of Theology. So colleagues, thank you very, very much for joining us for this open day presentation in the Faculty of Theology. It's a wonderful community, a great place to study, a wonderful place to prepare for a lifetime of, of service, uh, for a lifetime of impact, for a lifetime of, of learning how to, to shape and change the world. And we would love to see you joining us in our faculty. Thanks for, for being with us today.